So let's pick up our Bible on a good biblical subject today about whores and whoredom. The activity of paying for sex. But is, is that it? Is that all it's about? Well, in the first place, Genesis 38, 24. Genesis 38, 24. It came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah, St. Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, has played the harlot. And also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth and let her be burnt. Capital punishment for paid sex. First place in the Bible. Let's look at verse 13. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goes up to Timnah to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garment off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place which is by the way of Dimna for she had saw that Sheila was grown and was not given to him to wife that's Judah's son probably when he came of age should have been given to Tamar when Judah saw her he thought her to be a harlot because she had covered her face so harlots have a dress code they looked the part. And growing up in New London, you could recognize them by their dress, how they acted, where they were. And he turned unto her, by the way, and said, Go, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. Sexual gratification. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me? That thou mayest come in unto me. Oh, payment. And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. She said, What will thou give me a pledge till thou send it? And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, The signet and the bracelets and the staff that's in thy hand. I want a down payment. I want collateral for what we're going to do. In the first place, Harlow Three and Hordom shows up. It's a capital offense. And it's a man with his daughter in law. And there's payment. Now she doesn't actually get paid because he can't find her. But within time, her pregnancy is revealed and he doesn't know that it was her the whole time. Then when it's revealed to him, read the rest of the story. But that's what we're looking at. That's another story to study at another time. Exodus 34. Exodus 34. So we're proper in thinking paid sexual gratification. That's in the Bible. Exodus 34, verse 15. Exodus 34, 15. Least thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, Canaanites, and they go a whoring, okay, there it is, after their gods, small g-o-d-s, and do sacrifice unto their gods, small g-o-d-s, and one called thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou shalt take of their daughters unto thy sons, marriage, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, G-O-D-S, and make thy sons go whoring after their gods, small G-O-D-S. So we have the second time of whoring in the Bible. And it has nothing to do with sexual gratification, though there's a marriage. It's the worship of G-O-D-S, small g, gods, not God. And so when you have, like India, you have many gods. And when you are involved in that culture of many gods, God considers you to be a whore. When you have many adversaries and many friends that you can pray to in your religion, but God and Jesus Christ, you are a whore. Goes a step further than sexual gratification, does it? It goes into perversion. Whoredom can also be in the Bible the worship of other gods. Leviticus 17 7. Leviticus 17 7.
They shall no more offer their sacrifice unto devils, after whom they have gone a whoring. So when you worship unto anything that's not God and has become a God in your life, with or without the plural S, you are committing a whoredom. You are a whore. And what Christian would do that? Any Christian that puts anything above Jesus Christ and God the Father. Republican Party to President Trump. I see more posts about that, that stupid dog that got this guy over in, in Afghanistan. I don't even know where it is because I don't care. More than posts about Jesus Christ. And oh, this presidential family should be in trouble for killing all these people. You're involved in whoredom because you are raising more than Jesus Christ and God on the throne. You've got other gods. And you're spiritually committing whoredom. And it's a sin against God. And when you're on Facebook and, and you're talking to people and, you, and more of your talk and more of your post is all about Democrats and Republicans and, and, and all other kinds of nonsense and it's not given to Jesus Christ, that's boredom. The first command is God first. I don't see that with Facebook Christians. Hey, I tell it as it is. 1929. I think it's 1929. Do not prostitute thy daughter. The cause her to go to be a whore. Least the, fan, the land be filled with whoredom, and the land be overcome with wickedness. Okay, there's sexual gratification. There's parents or a father per, not permitting his daughter to go and charge for sex. She's to grow up proper, she's to find a husband, marry her husband, and then the marriage bed. The pain of sex and the worship of God is boredom. It's a sin. 20 verse 15. The biggest 20 verse 15. If a man lie with a beast, well that's a sin right there, but that's not... Oh, verse 5. 20 verse 5. That's a sin too. What we read. Then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. Molech is a god. He's, a, he's an idol god that they were sacrificing their babies to. It's a god that had a fiery burning a uh, hole in his stomach and mechanical levers would toss that infant that baby those children into the belly of that of that idol to burn that's a sacrifice to a god and it's also sacrificing your children because you want a life because it's a mistake it is a this is post abortion abortion is a sin it's horrid when you're worshiping that child more then God in a life the Bible says that children are a heritage of God and you're giving up that child as a sacrifice because you want to live, you want to enjoy, you want to have you and you and you. Gods that are not God and Christians have gods that are not God. That is whoredom. And God is angry. Verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as the familiar spirits, and after wizards, you mean Harry Potter, to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. I'll tell you what is more defiled, and I'm going to spell it out. Christian magicians, you are whoredom against God. You are deceiving the people with your tricks. It is a sin, and you need to stop, and you need to repent of that sin and get right with God. I've seen churches endorse the wizardry. When you're involved with magic and wizards and seances and horoscopes, you are whoring against God. 
Verse 7, sanctify yourself, therefore, and be holy. For I am holy. For I am the Lord your God. You know what's opposite of unholy? Whoredom. You know what's opposite of God? Gods. So there it is. You can have gods, and you can have wizardry, you can have seances, you can have the horoscopes, which defile God. That's a whoredom. And you pay for those services. I know there's a place here where there's a, there's a woman set up at the booth of one of these flea markets, and you pay her. That's a whoredom. And you're not having sex. But you're paying for it. You pay a doctor to have abortion. You're paying for it. You pay for the newspaper to get your horoscope. You're paying for it. That's whoredom. You go to your church, your religion, you pay those gods. You pay for those candles. You pray the you, you pay for the priest of Baal to take care of whatever needs that the religion does for you. That's whoredom. That's against God. Numbers 25 1. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. And many of you won't like it. If you're involved with other gods and not God in Jesus Christ, you are a whore. And you've sinned against God. You've already seen it. Just a few verses. Numbers 25, 1. And Israel bowed in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredoms with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto their sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. So this XYZ church over here is having a spaghetti dinner. This church over here is having a fish fry. This church over here is having pancake breakfast. And you go and sit down with those gods that are not God. You paid for the meals, didn't you? That's boredom. It's a sin. How's that? Well, we're going to get a good... No, no, I don't care what you think. It's what the Bible says. You can take what you think and at the judgment seat of Christ have it burn up as wood, hay, or stubble. Or you can take what you think and have the sulfur of hell burn what you think. God says when you eat and sacrifice with other gods, other religions, that's not God. You're committing whoredom. You're not paying for sex, you're paying for the worship of God. That's not proper use of your money, my friend. Deuteronomy 22, and people are going to hate this message. I don't care. It's what the Bible says. A lot of times a man gets up and preaches the Bible for one. Deuteronomy 22, 13. You have all right to get this out, pass it out, share, like, and everything. Deuteronomy 13, uh, no. Deuteronomy 22, 13. If a man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her, and give the occasion of speech against her and bring the evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. And he, then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel virginity, the elders of the city in the gate. All right. This man hates his wife for whatever reason. And he says, listen, this woman, she's not a virgin. That's my charges against her. That's my accusation. And the parents are to come and prove her daughter. And if, if she found out that she was a virgin and he's lied, there are penalties for the husband lying. But if it cannot be proved, and she has stepped out. And she has committed a fornication. She has committed adultery. The Bible says. Verse 20. But if this thing be true. She has is not a virgin. And the tokens of virginity are not found for the damsel. Then they shall bring her out the damsel to the door of her father's house. And the men in the city shall stone her with stones that she die. Because she has wrought folly. In Israel and played the whore in her father's house so shalt thou put evil away from you all right so let's look at this a teenage girl sleeps around with every man in high school the Bible says that's evil the Bible says that's a capital offense in the Old Testament 
It says it's folly. And she's played the whore. She's sleeping around. No, she's a whore. They probably buy gifts for her. They probably give her flowers and candy and cards. And she probably receives them. Hoard them. Hoard them. 2317. There shall be no whore of the doors of Israel. Alright, so what's the context? Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Do you know what is opposite of a whore? The whore for the female. The sodomite for the male. And there are male sodomites out there who sell themselves on the street. God says that is a violation. That is a sexual sin. No matter what the standards of America and England teach, God says it's an abominable. It is sin. It is not to be done. That ranks up there with not having God and Jesus as your God with other gods. Oh, the sodomites are so wicked and vile. And go team, go team. You're equal with them. Oh, my, my IRA, my 401k. Oh, that's going to take care of my future. You're ranked with the sodomites and you're ranked with the, with the women who, who have people pay for it. Because you have another God, your IRA, your career, your family, whatever it is. That, that is your God's. You are in order. And there are plenty of gods out there that Christians have that's not God. Their church, their pastor, themselves, their cars, their hobbies, their home. Whatever you give more time and more money to, and if it's not God in Jesus Christ, it is order. It's a sin. And it ranks right up there with sodomy. I wish you shut up. I wish you stopped talking. Uh, Deuteronomy, that was 23. 3116. 3116. We need someone to speak the truth. 3116. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy father. And this people will rise up and go a whoring after other gods. The church, the lie of the seeing church will rise up and take on the world and the worldly means of salvation. You're a whore. Oh, we're rich. God says you're poor and miserable and naked. And look at all the people in our class. Look at all the people in our Sunday school class. Look at all the people in our church. Look at our membership. God says, hey, you're miserable, naked, poor, and blind. You've got other gods. How do you know? Glad to see in church age that the, the chapter ends. Jesus Christ is standing outside the door of the church, knocking on it. Anybody want to come out? Stop bragging about your church today when Jesus is standing outside this church age. Oh, of course, you got the greatest church in all glad to see in church age, period. Yeah, sure. Right. Ah. Right. People hate that. Judges, too. Judges too. I don't preach for people who like me. I preach the Bible, the truth. Listen, I've got churches upset me. I got Christian families upset with me. I've got pastors upset with me. Because I preach the word. Uh Judges two seventeen. And yet they would not hearken unto the judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. And they turned quickly out of the way, the truth and the life, which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandment of the Lord, but they did not so. You know what God could be? A small G-O-D-S entertainment. The pleasures of the world. Hebrews chapter 11. That can be a God and not God. Woohoo! We got bowling night at church. And how many people go out and witness and evangelize? Two, three. I've been in church where one man's going knocking on doors for the Lord. And then other thing, you know, the, the fellowship after church is, is packed. People come in through the windows, through the doors, and down the chimney to get to the fellowship. I'm telling you, 827. 
827 judges. People don't like the truth no more. Sanctify and see that see that truth. That word is truth. That's what the Bible says. And Gideon made an ephah thereof and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And all the Israel went a whoring after it. And when the thing became a snare to Gideon in his house, Gideon makes this kind of flag kind of thing. And they put their hand to the heart and say, I, I, I swear to that flag. I make a pledge of allegiance to that, to that flag for which it stands. And you can't burn it. You can't step on it. You can't throw it in the garbage. But the heck with the Bible. As I've seen Bibles uh, uh, coming out of the church. Falling off the roof of the cars. As they turn out of the parking lot of the church. I've seen Bibles get flickered across a basketball field. On the blacktop. To get to the, to the king basketball. I've seen so many not come into church with a Bible. You against the flag? Judges. Judges. Made someone mad in that one. Verse 33. 833. And it came to pass as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again and went a whoring after Baal and made Baal, Baal birth, their God. They have all kinds of gods. Baal is God plural. They got all kinds of gods. They got gods on their, on their dashboards in the junkyard. They got their gods of Friday. They got their gods of fishermen. They got their gods, their patriot gods of, of housewives. They got their, uh, their their patron gods of, you know, making clothes. They got their patron god of, you know, of students. They got multiple gods. You know, for every day to count of 365 days, there is a patriot god of the Catholic Church of whatever mess. And God says that is whoredom. Whoredom. Just as much as going to a woman on the street corner and saying, how much can I get from you? So I can get something from you. You don't like the plain language. Oh, it's a sin to go, go get a whore. It's a sin to go against God. And when you serve God, you pay for those gods. That's whoredom. That's whoredom. Okay, where are we at now? Judges, that was chapter 8, 33, 19, 2. Judges 19, 2. You need light. You ain't getting it today in the pulpits. And his concubine, his concubine, not concubine, his concubine played the whore against him. She went after other men. You know what that's called also? That's called adultery. You know what Hollywood calls that? They call it the movies. And they have pleasure. Oh, I said pleasure, didn't I? So we have whoredom as a man buying sex. A woman going out to get money for sex. We have men serving gods. Men paying gods to please them. And we have also a reference to sodomy. Oh, that's a great crowd. How, how about the great church of the whoredom? And yet you could put Ichabod, and some of you don't even know what that means. You could put Ichabod on many of the churches in the world today. And right under Ichabod, you could put whoredom. We'll pass the plate. Oh, Stiley, shut up. No, 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 no. All right, 2 Kings 9.22. 2 Kings 9.22 You know, if the Holy Spirit wants you to hear this, keep hearing, and you get angry, and you get angrier, and you get angry, and you're spitting nails, you better listen to the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu, and he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, said, What peace, as long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel? And her witchcrafts are so many. Man, you gotta study Jezebel. That woman was a whore. That woman worshipped God. That woman had her own prophets. That woman had her own fathers. That woman had her own gods. That woman had her own altars. That woman was a murderer. 
That woman was wicked and vile. That woman took her husband and signed his name to his paperwork. And she's involved in witchcraft. Okay, we're going to do tricks for Jesus, for children to turn to Jesus. Africa? No, we can't say Africa. Uh, Hokey pokey see, whatever you, that nonsense. Witchcraft is a sin. It is whoredom. My pastor don't tell me that. He has me do it directly from the pulpit. Then your pastor is a failure. I didn't say that. Scripture said that. Ooh. Okay. First Chronicles 5.25. First Chronicles 5.25. You know, there's a particular magic show that people preach about in churches against 5.25. You say, what is it? Evil Pumas Walk of Duty. I'm going to take this wafer and turn it to the literal body of Jesus. Halius Corpus up my ruckus. I'm going to take this wine and turn it to the blood of Jesus Christ. That's a magic show that is abomination to God. Because the Bible says if that is literal blood and it's not literal blood, you're not supposed to drink any and eat any blood before the law, during the law, and in the church age. It's a violation. The mass is witchcraft. It's whoredoms. Whoredoms. Ooh, I really got a bunch of people. 525, First Chronicle. And they transgress against the God of their fathers and went a whoring after the gods of the people of the land whom God destroyed before them. So the people that were losers, the people that God passed judgment upon, the people that God destroyed because of their gods, Israel took their gods, Israel worshipped their gods, Israel gave Sunday service to their gods, Israel gave Saturday Sabbath to their god, and God said, you're a whore. I didn't say it, God said it. A whore could be driving around in a little buggy, having a nine iron and woods, and hitting a little ball to a hole. That hole that you're aiming for is not holy. God is holy. Ooh. Don't do that. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Second, uh, Second Chronicles 21. Second Chronicles 21. Second Chronicles 21, verse 13. Of time we had some in your face preaching. But has walked in the way of the kings of Israel. They were all wicked. Not one king in Israel was right with God. And made Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, to go a whoring like the whoredoms of the house of Ahab, that's Jezebel, and also slain thy brethren of thy father's house, murder. So everything that Honey Pie Jezebel done, Mother Church has done. The children of Judah in Jerusalem were doing everything that Mother Religion was doing, Jezebel. And God said, it is whoredom. It is wicked. It is vile. Just because the world does it, doesn't mean we're to do it. Just because the carnal Christian does it. Does it mean we're to do it? Because the worldly church does it. Does it mean we're supposed to do it? Plain and simple. Psalms 106, 39. Psalms 106, 39. 106, 39. Some of you probably said, Ooh, I'm going to get a nice sexual message. You are. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Oh. Look how great our military strength is. Look how great our guns are. Oh, I'm going to die for my gun. I'm going to be God guns in, in country. Oh, I'm going to, you know, you're going to take my gun out of my dead hands. A gun is an invention. Sports teams are invention. Knick-knack paddywhacks are an invention. And you can spend all your all to go after your invention. 
and they're a dime a dozen plus shipping and handling, and that's hoarding. You want to know what I'm talking about? Go visit your local flea market and look at every table, and every table has someone's God on that table. Some way is going to be ooh and ah for something on one of those tables. That's hoarding. Proverbs 6.26 Proverbs 6.26 For by means of a whorish woman, whoa, oh, oh, God, Solomon. Solomon was married to a thousand women, and he can make that statement like that. Solomon had insight of women. He was deceived by women. A man is brought to a piece of bread. An adulteress will hunt for precious life. That's not good contact. A man will sell him out for sexual pleasure just for a piece of bread. And there'll be a woman there ready to take the bread. A man's appetite is sex. Jesus said, whosoever looked upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery. That's the pornographic racket, whether it be printed, whether it be on a computer, wherever it is. And there are women out there and their makeup and they know that that man just wants to look at their touchy. And they dress everything up for the appetite of the man's eyes, the lust of the eyes. And when that woman prees herself up and bunces herself up and tightens herself up to get attraction of the men, that is whoredom. Because you paid for those cosmetics, you paid for those clothes. The Bible says that Jesus said, Whoso looketh upon a woman has committed adultery, looking upon with his heart, has committed adultery with her. He ain't all by himself. Now granted, there's some women out there who, who have not dressed in that purpose or have a body where they try to dress moderate and, alright, I mean, there's exceptions to that clause. But there are this wild, wicked, adulterous women out there, whores that want you to look and want you to starve and want you to drool over. And the Bible calls that whore. And Christian woman, if you dress like that, you dress to please other men, you're considered a whore. Let me tell you. From the Bible. Before you go outside, you better stand in that stand in front of that mirror in the bathroom or full length mirror and bend yourself over. And if you can see any flesh when you bend over, you need to rechange your clothes. If the crack of your butt shows, you need new pants. I don't like this message. 23-27. He doesn't know what he's talking about. My pastor thinks it's okay. Your pastor may be ogling you and committing adultery. Oh, don't say about my pastor. Sacrilege, sacrilege. You talked about my pastor. Proverbs 23. Some of you are laughing. For a whore is a deep ditch. <laughs> it's hard to get out of a deep ditch. You need somebody's help to get you out of a deep ditch. It's muddy sometimes. Sometimes it's covered with snow. I had one time when I was driving up in Connecticut. I was doing my job and it was snowing. And I slid off the road. And I, you know, I'm going to try to get myself. And the more I try to get myself out, the more trouble I got myself in. I had to have the company call a tow truck company to come and get me out. It was only by help of another that I can get out. And the only help you can get out of being a whore, the only help you can get out of this God's worship is if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to repent of your sins and get right. Psychiatrists ain't going to help you. Beauty parties ain't going to help you. The religion ain't going to help you. Isaiah 57.3 Isaiah 57 3. I hate this guy on YouTube. He's yelling at me. He's all mean and nasty. Proverbs 57 3. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorcerers, the seed of adulterers and the whore. You know, sometimes your parents teach you sins that you ought not be learning. 
You may be, you know, you may be involved in your sins. You may be planting seeds in your church. We're Christians. But this is for Christians. We're supposed to be planting the seeds of the gospel. Not the seeds of wizardry. Not the, sin, not the seed of adultery or whores. Well, as Christians, I've taken my family to go see those those sorcery movies and that magic movies and the and the sword and all that. And what are you putting in that heart, heart of those children? What's going to happen when when a mean, nasty, ugly preacher like me comes up with the truth and preaches the truth? Yeah, he's mean and nasty. I don't get that from my church. After all, our church takes part of that. A vacation Bible last year was all about the sorceries and stuff like that. We even had a Christian magician come and perform for us. I don't know what you're talking about. Wicked. Jeremiah 3 2. Ooh, Jeremiah had Jeremiah had one convert. As we far as see, maybe two. The entire nation was against Jeremiah. They wanted Jeremiah dead just as much as they wanted Jesus dead. Nobody followed Jeremiah like they followed Jesus. Now they came to Jesus to be to be healed of their blindness. They came to Jesus to get the devils out. They came to Jesus so they could walk. They came to Jesus so they could do. No one came to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 2. Lift up thy eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lean with. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the way of the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms, and with thy wickedness. Whoredoms is in relation to wickedness. Yes, sexual pleasures. Yes, honoring other gods besides God. You know what other gods can be? Plastic items. Metal items. Wood items. Marble items. Rocky items. Anything that's not God. That God is a spirit. We must worship him in spirit and truth. Uh, Jeremiah 3.9 And it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom. That she defiled the land, committed adultery with stones and with stocks. Now listen, wait a minute. They were not having sex with stones and stuff and, and trees. Though I must say that there is a group of people today who are having sex with the earth. I've read about them. And I looked into it, and it's true. There are people out there who have an interest me with the earth. It's sick and vile. But you know what these rocks and stocks and stones are? Idols and images. It's like that guy you put on your dashboard in your car. It's like that you know, that, that, that crucifix with Jesus on it that you wear about your breast. It's about that big fat guy that, that sits cross-legged and he's supposed to have all power and knowledge though he's dead. But in plastic too. Whether your God is plastic, wood, metal, gold, silver, paper, whatever it is, it's adultery and it's whoredom. David committed adultery, the greatest sin in the Bible, it's adultery. And how you do with plastic, paper, wood, hay, stubble? How you doing? How you doing with whoredom? Is God one in your life all the time, every time? How is that? How is that? Ezekiel 6 9. Ezekiel 6 9. You know, pride can be a sin. Pride lifts yourself up, pride lifts up your nation. That's a sin. That's boredom. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whether they shall be carried captive, because I am broken with their whorish heart. Let's read on. Which they departed from me. They left God. That's whorish heart. Leaving God, Christian, is a whorish heart. And with their eyes which go whoring after their idols. And they shall loathe themselves with the evil which they have committed in all their abominations. Whoredom is abominations, idolatry, it's your heart. 
Oh, I'm a Christian now. My heart is beautiful, wonderful, and great. Right. No, you're wicked and vile. You're wicked and vile. Ezekiel 16, 17. Ezekiel 16, 17. Listen, I, I hate to make it, but listen, I'm, I'm sin. I'm a sinner. All have sin comes true. There have been times I've been a whore. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Somewhere along the line, we've fallen. Exodus, I mean, excuse me, Ezekiel 16, 17. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold, God's gold, and of my silver, God's silver, which I have given thee, and mayest thyself images of men, and didst commit whoredoms with them. Do you see the statue of David? With his private parts sticking up? Oh, isn't that just so great? God says that's whoredom. You see the American eagle, the bald eagle? You see how great it is? God says that's whoredom. Oh, did it again. I'm kicking. I'm kicking. You see those coins you got with the faces on them? Men's faces? And you love them? The love of money is the root of all evil? That's whoredom. That's whoredom. Post a stamp. You collecting post a stamp? Don't they have men's faces on them? Whoredom. Whoredom. It's a sin. It's an abomination. Oh, go please. Go turn this off and, and go preach about the Catholic Church some more. I am. Verse 20. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, God. And these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? You're giving your children over to the world. You're giving your children over to the devil. And God says that's whoredom. Jesus said, bring the little children unto me. Now, be careful. You know, I know we got these bus and band ministries and stuff like that. And we got the BBS every year. Every church has the B Every church has BBS. That's not what's wrong with BBS. Even the Catholics are now having it. And just think because a church is having a program for children. Don't think it's right. They may have, pre they may have a perverted Bible. And they not may be teaching God at all. Oh yeah. 15 minute Bible. 20 minute lunch. 35 minutes arts and craft and 10 minutes to get everybody refreshed and then time to have Tootsie Roll and then time to go out and play in the playground because you earn to get the slide at first in your class. Meanwhile, teaching competition between the groups of people that should be getting together. And it's funny with VBS, you don't ever see the kids come back. They only come back on VBS. That's interesting. Oh, Ezekiel. Verse number 26. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptian, thy neighbor, great of flesh. I don't know if you know what that means. But Africans, to be clean, are great of flesh. It has increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Israel's going back to where God told them not to go. He said, don't go back to Egypt. They're going back to Egypt. They're going back to the whoredom. They go back to the bank. They go back to their family own the money. They go back to other institutions. They don't go to God in prayer. James says, you receive not because you ask not. You didn't ask God. You asked somebody else. And God gets angry. That's whoredom. 33. Same chapter 33. And they give gifts to all whores. Flowers, candy, money. But thou givest thy gifts to all the lovers. They're doing complete opposite. They're giving what God's given them. To the people they're committing adultery with, fornication with, and whoredom. They're giving it to the nation. The resources of Israel is being given out to the people that are sleeping in the bed of Israel. It's for Israel to enjoy, not the other nations. That's vile and wicked. 23.14 Ezekiel 23.14 And that she increased her whoredom for when she saw men portrayed on the wall you mean like a movie theater? An art exhibit? 
I like over here, we got an art zip it, and there's one play, but I think they have two nudies, two or three nudies, and it's like in a corner. You have to go in that corner. You can avoid it. I've been to other art in institutes where they're not. We had a place where I lived in New London, Connecticut. They pasted right up on the wall of a big build, a vacant building. Nudity. Yeah, uh, isn't that just art? And I wrote editorials after editorials, and people were blasting me. It's not art. It's Playboy. It's sin. And I forget where I was at. 2314. They increased their horn with man picture and wall. Hollywood. 30. Nakedness. And they shall deal with thee hatefully, and shall take away all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare, and the nakedness of thy whoredom shall be discovered. That's what God will do to you one day. Judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. God will reveal to you your unconfessed orders. Get it under the blood. Uh, let's see what we got. Hosea chapter 1. You know what Hosea was told to do? Hosea 1 2. In the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms, and the children of whoredoms. For the land has committed great whoredoms departing from the Lord. Whoredoms departs from the Lord. You know what God told Hosea? Go marry a whore. Why would God do that? Because God wanted to show Israel, Judah, and Jerusalem. I'm a type of Hosea, and you're the type of his bride. I guarantee people talked about Hosea. You see the wife that he married? I know Baptists do. God says, I'm only trying to show you something. That's what you're doing to me. That's what you've done to me. Ephesians 5, 5. Ooh, we're going to the New Testament now. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5, 5. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, okay, nor unclean person, nor covetous, you could want other gods, money, anything but God, who is an idolater, covetous is idolatry, look at that, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. You know what, Christian? If you have unconfessed sin, you are an unclean carnal Christian, and it's not under the blood of Jesus Christ, you don't get any rain in the millennium. I don't know what happens to you. You know the man that got, uh, I think it was the talents or the pounds, I forget which one, but God exchanged the pounds or the talents for cities. If you're involved in these sins as a Christian, you lose an inheritance. Wood, hay, or stubble. Hebrew 13, 4. Hebrew 13, 4. Marriage is honorable in all. That's what God said. Get married. And the bed undefiled. Anything between a husband and wife behind that bedroom door is sacred to God. He wants to... God said that marriage, marriage bed undefiled. But, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And that's not just talking about sexual sins. What have we been looking at? When you worship other gods, before God. Revelation 17. Revelation 17, 1. Revelation 17, 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying, Come unto me. I'm going to sing, come, yeah, unto me, come up hither. Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon the many wars. All right, we have a great whore. Who, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. The world loves her. 
They even bow down before her ambassador and kiss his ring. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with her wine of fornication. Oh, she has a wine. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness. I saw a woman sit on a scarlet colored beast. Red dragon. Full of the names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet. You know a church that has purple and red? And decked with gold and precious stones. Haven't we just seen that with gods? And pearls. Having a golden cup. You know a church that has a cup? In her hand full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was written, a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, mother of harlots, abomination of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Do you know a church that has killed Christians, true Christians, over the word of God? And they will not take of her cup. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. That's the Holy Mother Church, the Catholic Church. And there was in the mind which has wisdom, the seven heads are seven mountains of which the woman sitteth. Do you know a woman who is a church who is vile and wicked and sits on seven mountains? Aventine, Caesline, Capaldine, Escaline, Palatine, Admiral, Bonimno in Rome. I mispronounced those names. Look it up. 21.8 21.8 Aren't you glad you're washed? I'm washed in the blood. But the feeble and unbelieving and abominable, murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters see, that, that seems to be the company of people we've been talking about and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. That's not Christian. If a Christian does these things, he suffers in wood, hay, or stubble, but he himself doesn't burn. 22.15 Close out the Bible. 22.15 For without our dogs, there are no dogs in heaven. Did you get it? Without our dogs. And sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and I, you notice how these Keep showing up with the whoremongers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. That's Satan. 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. When you put something before God, you need to repent. And we all do it. We have not always turned to God the very first time. I've done it. Listen, I, I, I don't know you want to call it tragic moments or, you know, moments where despair or, you know, something. God's been the last one on my mind. You know, I had last week, you know, we're going to go down to the farmer's market and this is traffic and other events. I didn't think in my mind until I got home and sat in my chair. Gee, I could have set up and preached there. You know what the problem was? I had whoredom. Because I was not thinking of God. Because if I would have been thinking of God, I would have stopped, dropped, and prayed, and God would say, hey, stand up right here. So even I had sinned against God. And I'm glad First John 1, 9 is there. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Any moment Jesus is coming, get the sins under the blood now. 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, or adulterers, or effeminate, you know, you're a man with no backbone, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. 
But you are sanctified. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You know, we're saved. We're not going to fall in, those, in that crowd of Revelation 21 and 22. But that does not mean that as Christians, if we sin against God, uh, there'll be no recompulsions. And nothing may happen to us on the earth, but when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and if it's wood, hay, or stubble, we suffer loss. And it need not be so. And again, the verse, if we confess our sins, anything we put ahead of God, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. And whatever sins we take with us Christians, it goes before the judgment seat of Christ and it will be burned up. And some of that burning could take away a crown. It can take away the right to a uh, millennial inheritance. And I pray you don't let your sins overpower you. I pray that you will confess and get it right with God and forsake it and fight it. But whoredom is not just paying for sex. Whoredom is also anything but God. <laughs>